Hello, and welcome to PointWise, where grid generation and user friendliness converge. The purpose of this video is to show you how to build a structured grid on a circular area. In fact, I will show you two ways to do this. The first method is the simplest and the quickest, but the second method results in higher quality cells. Regardless of how we do this, the first thing we need is a circle geometry. Let's start out our exercise by creating a circular database. This presents a problem because a structured grid always needs four edges. To solve this, split the circumference of a circle into four equal parts. We end up with four segments that sweep through a total angle of 360 degrees. Click on the Create menu and select Draw Curves and then Circle. Note that the panel has added a whole new tab called the Draw Circle tab. Click on the pink Magic Carpet Shape button to denote that we are creating a database. Make sure the circle segment type is selected. In the Point Placement XYZ text box, enter 0, 0, 0, all separated by a space, and then press the Enter key. Now enter the numbers 10, 0, 0, all separated by a space, and then press the Enter key. Down lower on the panel, in the Circle Segment options, choose the option for two points and angle. All right, now type in 360 into the angle box and press the Enter key. Now press the OK button. Now we have a circle. As mentioned before, structured grids require four edges. So let's split this circle in half and then split each of those halves in two as well. Select the circle. Now use the Edit menu and select Split. In the Percent of Length box, type in 50 and press Enter. Now push OK. We now have two semicircles. Let's split each of those in half using the same Edit Split menu and once again choosing a 50% split. Our underlying database is now complete. Before we can do anything, let's go ahead and change the default connector dimension in PointWise. On the panel to the left, click on the tab labeled Defaults. Click in the Dimensions box and type in 20 and then press the Enter key. Now every time we create a new connector, it will be created with a dimension of 20. As I mentioned before, there are two main methods to put a structured grid on a circle. Let's start with the easiest. Select all four of the circular segments. Find the icon on the toolbar that looks like a pink carpet with a green border. That is called the Connectors on Database Entities icon. Go ahead and click on that. Each of your segments now has a connector on it, and each of those has a dimension of 20. Select all four connectors. Now push the Assemble Domains button, which looks like a light blue diamond with a golden wrench on it. Now you have a structured domain. Let's talk about that. When it comes to structured domains, the quality of a grid is directly proportional to how orthogonal the grid lines are to one another. For much of this grid, you can see the orthogonality is quite good. However, at the edges, it's not quite as good. Look at the very top, which would correspond to a corner of the rectangular computational domain. Those angles can be quite sharp. Now let's examine the domain to see if there are places we can improve upon. Select a domain and then go to the Examine menu and pick Maximum Included Angle. Ideally, we would like to see all of them at around 90 degrees, but that's not always possible. Note that many of these cells have huge angles approaching 175 degrees or more. These would be areas of low quality cells that may negatively affect your final CFD solution. Fortunately, there is a second method to help resolve this issue and we call it the Butterfly Topology. It involves taking a circular domain and breaking it up into five domains where the cells have less extreme angles. But first, we need to delete this domain. We're going to start over using the existing connectors. If you are still in the Examine panel, scroll down to the bottom and push the Close button. Then select the domain and push the Delete key. We need to create some new connectors and then we're going to modify them. We'll do this by drawing some diameter lines and then splitting them. 
push the toolbar icon with the straight green connector. Select the top node and then the bottom node. This should create a vertical connector. Now repeat this for the left node and the right node. This should create a horizontal connector. Now push the OK button. We are going to split these new connectors in half and then in half again. Watch how I select them and then use the edit split command which we have already discussed. When it is all done, you should have what looks like a green target site. Now let's create connectors between the midpoints of all these new radius lines. This should create a square or a diamond shape, like this. We no longer need the interior halves of those radius lines, so please delete them. What you are left with is the basic connector layout of what we call the butterfly topology. We have a square or a diamond in the middle surrounded by domains that are not quite rectangular. Let's create domains on all of these closed areas. Select all four connectors in the upper right quadrant. Now push the assemble domains button. That's the light blue diamond with a golden wrench. Note that it didn't work. Unfortunately, all of that splitting that we did left us with some unbalanced connectors. But that's okay, we can fix it. Select all of the connectors and change the dimension to 20 using the shortcut on the toolbar, like this. Now we can resume. Click on the connectors that surround the upper right quadrant. Now push the Assemble Domains icon. Repeat this for the four other closed areas. We have now created a set of five structured domains on the same circle that used to have one domain. Before we run the solver, let's see how bad the grid line angles are right now. Select all of the domains and go to the examine menu and select max included angle. Wow, note the improvement. The max angle has dropped all the way down to about 135 degrees. Let's see if we can run the solver to improve this. Push the close button at the bottom of the panel. With the domain still selected, look in the grid menu and select Solve. On the panel, click on the Edge Attributes tab. We want all of the interior lines to float during the solver run. To do so, we have to first select all of the interior lines. Note that this will require selecting each one twice since there are domains on both sides of the connectors. The easiest way to do this is to click the mouse in the upper left quadrant and slowly drag it down to the right quadrant. Doing so will select all of the interior connectors that are touched. At the bottom of the panel, there is a drop box named Boundary Conditions Type. From that drop box, choose Floating. Now push the Apply button. Switch back to the Solve tab. Let's run this for 100 iterations. Type in 100 at the bottom next to Iterations. Now push the Run button. What you just saw was Pointwise trying to optimize all of the grid line intersections in an attempt to make them orthogonal or as close to orthogonal as possible. Now that the solver has run, 
Let's see if we can improve upon the max included angle of 135 degrees that we had just before we ran the solver. First push OK to accept this solved set of domains. With the domain still selected, push the examine menu and choose max included angle. Note that we've reduced it to about 122 degrees. This is a noticeable improvement over the 175 or higher degrees that we saw with the simplest of methods. I hope the butterfly topology proves helpful to you and your future work. If you have more questions or are looking for more information, please send us an email at support at pointwise.com. Thank you very much for watching.